We're talking about basic. We're talking about putting certain things in your mouth and not putting other certain things in your mouth. Yeah. We're talking about moving your body a couple hours a day. We're talking about putting some good information in your brain. Like this is really easy stuff that will build your life into a tremendously beneficial and fulfilling and quite frankly, an existence that you're proud of that we skip out on on a daily basis. And then the price that we pay is, is immense. It's massive because it costs us everything. Yeah. It costs us the whole quality of life. People need to understand that if you could just adjust a few things about yourself, you can have everything you want. Because once you get to that place where things are comfortable, when you're uncomfortable, what's the trade? You're not feeling any pain when you're really doing the thing yep. and you're still getting all the benefit. So the only way to really win and not have to do that thing where you have to pay the price now or pay the price later is to get so comfortable with the hard path that you don't notice it being uncomfortable. And then you win all the time. What is up, guys? It's Andy Purcell, and this is the show for the real Let's say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness, and delusions of modern society, and welcome to reality, guys. Today, we have Q and AF. That's where you submit the Qs, and we uh, give you the AFs. Now, you can submit your questions to be answered on this show uh, one of a few different ways. The first way is... You guys, email those questions into askandy at andyforsella.com. Or you can go in the comments right here on this episode that posts every single Monday and uh, drop your question in the comments and we'll pick some from there as well. Other times you're going to hear CTI. That stands for Cruise the Internet. That's where we talk about current events, what's going on in the world. We post headlines on the screen. We speculate on what's true and what's not true. And then we talk about how we, the people, have an obligation to fix some of these problems in the world. Other times we have Real Talk. Real Talk usually comes out on uh, Thursdays, sometimes Saturdays where it's just five to 20 minutes of me giving you some real talk. Then we have full length is uh, like what you see on most other podcasts. All right. We have interesting people come in. We have a conversation. And then we have uh, 75 hard verses, 75 hard verses where someone who has completed the 75 hard program comes in and talks about how their life was before and how their life is after. Uh, and it's usually tremendously better 100% of the time. We talk about how you could do the same. If you're unfamiliar with the 75 Hard program, uh, you can get the program for free, which is part of the Live Hard program, at episode 208 on the audio feed. You can also buy the book. The book is available on andyforsella.com. If you go to andyforsella.com, there's a book called The Book on Mental Toughness. This book includes the full Live Hard program plus a plethora of information, many chapters, many, many chapters on mental toughness, okay? So you don't need the book because you can get the program for free, but I think you'll like the book. It sells very well and people seem to like it. So go check that out. Now we have this thing called the fee. The fee is very simple. Um, I don't run ads on the show. I'm not signed with a big network. I say no to those things all the time. And I do that because I don't want to be told what I can and can't talk about. We keep it real here. That's why it's called Real AF. I don't want to be told what I can and can't say or leveraged or any which way. So I don't have ads on the show. You're going to notice that. And I ask in exchange for that, very simply, that you help share the show and spread the word. We get throttled. We get traffic banned, shadow banned, whatever you want to call it, all the time because of the nature of this show and keeping it real. And uh, if you would like this show to, to, to continue to spread, I'm going to need your help. So uh, when I say pay the fee, that means share the show. Um so, yeah, don't be a hoe. Share the show. All right. Hey, What's up, man? What's going on? Oh, not much. Yeah? What's up with you? Cracking open that uh, the bougie. Su success water. That's right. Did you say booty? Bougie. Oh, bougie. Yeah, booty water. Yeah, booty water. Yeah. Oh, this is booty water. Yeah, what's going on with you, man? Happy Monday. Yeah, man. Yeah? Just getting it done. Yeah? yeah. Yep. I wonder how many people quit their New Year's resolution already. Mm. I wonder how many listeners did. I wonder how many of the people. They wouldn't tell you if they did. I know they wouldn't. They wouldn't. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. They just keep, now they're going to start the cycle back up again where they keep telling each other they're going to start. Mm -hmm. They're going to go Monday, Tuesday, half the day of Wednesday, and then say, F I'm going to start again on Monday because I deserve mm -hmm. it. And then they're going to spend the next five or six or 20 years doing that. And then they're going to look back and they're going to say, man, I wish I hadn't done that. Yeah. Because it's going to cost them everything. They don't realize I think it most people's thing, I mean, I mean, tell me if you agree with this, but I, th I feel like most people... Th they just don't, they, they have to understand like the momentum is created, right? And they just don't give it enough time for the momentum to like get going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But well, like, I mean, you got days away from like massive momentum. It's, it's, it's not even that dude. It's, <clears throat> it's the idea. 
the instant gratification mentality is so prevalent in our society that people get frustrated when they have to like do anything that is even minorly inconvenient and they seek comfort and they look for the easy way and they look for the way that's going to be the most convenient right now and totally disregard what the cost of that is. You know, they don't think like, oh man, if I do this now, it's going to cost me this later. And most people live their lives that way and they live very unsatisfied, unfulfilling, frustrating existences because they never realize that you know, every single time you choose the easy path now, you have to pay that later with a harder price. And once you start to understand that that's reality and there's no way to get around it, your perspective changes. And the idea, I talked about this a little bit on, on a Friday show, but the idea of chasing comfort is a false expectation of reality. You know, we do all these things and we chase all these pleasures and these instant gratifications and all of these things that are quote unquote comfortable in, in the pursuit of comfort. And what we'd fail to realize is that later on in life, it makes us very uncomfortable. And the whole idea of getting to a place of comfort is only achievable if you build yourself into someone who can do the hard things and perceive them to be comfortable. You have to get comfortable doing the hard things because the path to life never gets any easier. So the only comfort that you're ever really going to have without trading a massive price for it on the backside is to build yourself into someone who can handle the uncomfortable journey and not really notice that it's that uncomfortable because it's not. We're talking about basic shit. We're talking about putting certain things in your mouth and not putting other certain things in your mouth. Yeah. We're talking about moving your body a couple hours a day. We're talking about putting some good information in your brain. This shit ain't that hard. Like, this is really easy stuff that will build your life into a tremendously beneficial uh, and fulfilling and, and it, quite frankly, an existence that you're proud of that we skip out on on a daily basis. And then the price that we pay is, is immense. It's massive because it costs us everything. Yeah. It costs us the whole quality of life, you know, and that's... That's the point of the Live Hard program and 75 Hard. That's why I wrote 75 Hard. That's why I wrote the book on mental toughness because I people need to understand that if you could just adjust a few things about yourself, you can have everything you want. It's it's there there becomes no trade off now. Now there's no trade because once you get to that place where things are comfortable when you're uncomfortable, what's the trade? That you're you're not you're not feeling any pain when you're really doing the thing, yep. and you're still getting all the benefit. So the only way to really win, and not have to do that thing where you have to pay the price now or pay the price later, is to get so comfortable with the hard path that you don't notice it being uncomfortable, and then you win all the time. Yeah, you and accept that that's what it is, bro. And it's yeah. we're talking. Listen, bro, we're talking about this. Right. We're talking. Stop putting shit in your mouth. Start moving, read some books, drink some water, lift some weights. This is basic shit, man. And most people are so, f and by the way, this is no judgment because I was that person. Okay. But most people are so far outside of the ability to just do those simple things. They see them as painful, not realizing what it actually gains you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So I mean, you think 15, 20 years down the line, bro, what you're going to be having to pay hospital bills bro if you're 100 pounds overweight yeah. right now where are you going to be in 20 years yeah you see what i'm saying yeah. like if you're in your 20s dude and you're 100 pounds you're going to be 300 pounds overweight by the time you're 40 are you ready for that life are you ready to walk through life like having to ride the car around walmart and shit are you ready not being able to fit in a chair are you ready to like be looked at and gawked at and feel weird everywhere because everybody is looking at you because you're four times the size of an actual other human beings like, that's a whole nother thing we could yeah, get onto. Yeah. This fat acceptance shit where these people think that they can go to the airport and get two seats because they are because they can't stop themselves from gorging their faces. And everybody else got to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got to deal. And then, we, and then like, when we notice that they're the size of five human beings and we notice it, we're some sort of bigot. Mm -hmm. Bro, motherfucker, I know what it's like to be fat. All you fat motherfuckers, I know. I was fat too. Okay? And I can tell you this. All those lies you tell about... You know, oh, I love myself. Dude, you're a liar. No, you don't. 
You you the only people the only people that believe that are people who have never experienced being fat. There's the the thin people, you know, the virtue signaling bruncher moms who have the wealthy husband and drive the BMW, they might believe your shit because they've never been fat. But I'm going to tell you right now, I've been a fat motherfucker, and I know what it's like, and you ain't fooling people like me. So I have no problem telling you the way it is. And you know why people look at you? Because you're the size of five humans. That's abnormal. Yep. So try being the size of one human. Put in the work to yourself. Become the ultimate version of yourself. Be proud of yourself. Your life will change, dude. See how much you love yourself, man. Bro, that's self-love, dude. That's yeah. the thing. That's self-love. Self-love is doing the hard things required to build yourself into the ultimate uh, version of yourself. You know, this idea of self-love being self-acceptance of your shitty habits and your shitty lifestyle and your sh and basically your life being shit, that's not self-love, dude. That's a fake narrative that society has put down to make people feel okay with being a level one when they're supposed to be a level 10 in their own life. That's a control mechanism too, by the way. That's a whole. That's for CTI though. Yeah, that's that's, that's tomorrow's episode. Yeah, I mean that, they want that. <laughs> they want you to love yourself, being four hundred and five hundred pounds, three hundred pounds, because they know that if you're that, you're ineffective in any other area, yep. and you're dependent on them. You're 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 a hyper consumer of food. Yep. You're a hyper consumer of likely alcohol. You're a hyper consumer of medication. You're a hyper consumer of digital content streaming. Okay, you're making these people money in every which way, bro. The like, yeah, and we'll put you on all the magazines. Yeah, give you. We'll all say the, we'll say it's healthy. The the social media verifications you want. Yeah, we'll give you all of it. Yeah, and and I love how these people are trying to pretend like they're a protected class now. Mm. Like you can't criticize, dude. Shit. Like you 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 are the way you are because you haven't gotten enough criticism. Yeah. Real from the, shit from the right people. Yeah, man. including yourself. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's real shit, man. If you really love yourself, you fix that problem. No, I know some people can help fix that. You don't ever hear someone who was 400 pounds that gets down to like a normal weight and gets their shit together say, man, I wish I hadn't done that. Right. Never felt, you never, not one. Same thing with rich people. You never hear rich people say, man, I wish I hadn't made all that money. <laughs> that's what these people, that's the internet. That's, what that's they, like, they want, they want you to believe that. Bro, that's what yeah. we were talking about on Real Talk last week. Yeah. Where I was talking about that dude. Did you see that video of that dude? That uh, the black guy driving a Lamborghini, I don't know if you saw mm -hmm. it, and he's like ripping the gears, having a blast, bro. All the comments, 90% of the comments were hater comments. Like, oh, well, do you think money buys your hat? Goddamn right, bro. I'm going down oh. Lamborghini 100 miles an hour, yeah. my head sticking out the roof. Looks and pretty happy. It's <laughs> awesome. You ever done that? It's yeah. A, it's a good time. Anyway, <laughs> dude, quit, quit believing the lies, man. Yeah, man. Well, guys, Andy, it is uh, Q and A. We got a special Q and A today. So, all of these questions on today's Q and A is coming straight from the tube. Oh, really? Straight from YouTube. YouTube? Yeah, straight from the tube. Okay. Yeah. So let's get into it. All right. Man. Well. All right. I like the new <laughs> graphics. Yeah. That's nice. This is the first time we had those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> trying to shit on I you, just man. Love or not, I know he'll f kill you though. Uh, it's debatable. You you better not get close to him. Yeah. I'll steal this car tires. Jujitsu master over here. <laughs> He's gonna lay on the ground. <laughs> come on, DJ. Come at me. Come at me. Guys, Andy. Question number one. Uh, this question comes from at Chin Music twenty seven twenty two. Uh, Andy, how do you unify with crazy people? You don't. This is the common misconception of unification. There's going to be people on the outside of the unification. They're called the enemy. Mm. Right? They're not crazy. No, everybody thinks yeah. everybody thinks that unity requires everybody. That's not what unity means. I think we can all agree in society right now, we have 10% of the population, eight of it's on the far left, and two of it's on the far right, that are f***ing insane. Mm -hmm. Okay? And no matter how much common sense people come together... And no matter how much, you know, and by the way, we need to, okay? But if the 90% of us all come together, what the f*** are they going to do? We're not going to get them. And so, like, that's, this is a big problem with a lot of the movements and uh, causes and, and really political division that's going on right now is that people think that we can't get unity uh, because we'll never be able to, un I'll never unify with one of these pedos. No shit, you're not supposed to. No. 
That's them and we're us. The rest of us are supposed to unify and there's hundreds of millions of common sense Americans aligned with all political ideologies that are tired of what's going on in culture. They understand right and wrong. They understand that there's good people of every race and bad people of every race. There's good people of every religion and bad people of every religion. You know, somebody mentioned something to me when I was talking about the 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 tunnels that were dug in New York City and how some of the Jewish people were allegedly f***ing with kids. And they were like, well, what about Catholic priests? Yeah, I agree. In the wood chipper. Yeah. Right with them. Right. Yeah. Anybody. I don't give a f***. I don't care what race. I don't care what religion. I don't care. I don't care. They do not belong in our society. Correct. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what race or if they're Catholic or white or black or I don't care. Straight into the wood chipper, dude. Mm -hmm. And that's that's how it should be. And we allow all of these stupid uh, ideologies and divisions to divide us based upon labels that we adopt that are given to us by the people who are trying to divide us most. You're 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 a black person. You're not supposed to talk to this person. Right. You you're, can't think like that. You're a Republican. You don't yeah. you don't talk to those people. Party lines. You're you're straight. You don't talk to these people. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. These are all artificial divisions. When in reality, dude, we're all people, and there's good people and bad people, and good people have to unite. And there's going to be some bad people on the outside. And the crazy people that you're talking about here are not going to unify with us. They're going to end up on the outside. And that's that's how you, so you don't. That's the answer to the question. Love it, man. Guys, Andy, question number two. This question comes from at Tara Gisi, 3375. She says, Andy and DJ, y'all have recently made comments about how you could talk relationships for entire episodes, and I'm here for it. I'm a two-time entrepreneur with an extreme drive, and I live daily to be better. I keep ending up on dates with men, and when I ask what their goals are, I get responses like, I don't make goals. I get better every year without goals. What is your thoughts on dating and finding a guy who can be the hype man to a woman who takes no shit, leads a company with 25 employees solo, and makes it happen because she has no other options? My business always comes first, but I'll give a partner the same. But how can I be motivated by someone who doesn't have goals on what they want to accomplish in life? All right, well, first of all, I'm going to start with a, a statement. It's very difficult to lead a company on your own. Kudos to you. That's amazing. You're doing a great job. Uh, it's interesting to me that you feel that you need to be motivated by someone when you're already creating a company with 25 employees on your own. Seems to me you're self-motivated. So I would throw the idea of being motivated by someone as part of your relationship requirements out the window. All right. Secondly, you say, uh, I, you say you want a man who makes goals and has ambition, but you also say that you want a man who could be a hype man to you. So are you saying that you want this man to make his goals and ambitions to being your hype man so that you can go do your thing? Because if so, you, what you're saying is that your goals and dreams and what you're doing is more important than what this person is doing. And if we're going to break this down into pure sexual attraction, which is what we're talking about here, are you really going to be attracted to long term some supplicating support system dude who waits on you hand and foot? Or are you going to be attracted to somebody who has ambition, has goals, is a kick-ass motherfucker, and is out building their own thing? Because what it seems to me is you're fishing in the wrong pond. You're fishing in the pond of losers when you should be fishing in the pond of people who have their own things going on, who are going to be attracted to, who you are going to be into. And the reason you're going to be into them is because they are a challenge for you to get their attention. Because you are a woman, and since the time of purity, you have had every single dude that you have ever known who has claimed to be friends with you, secretly wanting to have sex with you. This is the reality of- Basic stuff. This is the reality of being a woman. The reality of being a man is we have to hunt and kill and chase and achieve and become to become sexually desirable. It's a t completely different life that a lot of you women don't understand for men, all right? Men walk into a buffet and women walk into a buffet and we have totally different experiences. You walk into the buffet and you f and say, okay, well, that looks good. That looks good over there. I think I'll have a bite of that. I think I'll have some of that too. You know what? Put a little bit of extra over here on this. You know, that wasn't cooked right to my liking. That's the experience of a woman when it comes to the dating pool. Do you know what it's like for a man? He walks into the buffet and he says, I think I'd get a cracker. Yeah, I'd kill somebody. Yeah, like <laughs> this is what you guys don't understand, okay? 
And this goes into the, this conversation should be directed at men too. Yep. A lot of you men do not understand the sexual dynamic between men and women, which is why you consistently end up being their friend and not someone who they're having sex with. And while you're being their friend and waiting on them hand and foot and doing all this nice shit, sending them flowers and shit, they're all an asshole. And you're like, well, they're fucking the asshole because of what I just said. Because by the time they reach puberty, every single dude they know and every single man that they've ever met and every single friend that they claim to have wants to have sex with them. So they get to make the decisions. They're the decision maker, all right? And you, as a dude, when you just chase the women and do all the shit and then you wonder why they go f the asshole, they f the asshole because he's the first guy in their entire existence who hasn't chased them. And you, and then, and then here for men make it a further, they, they take this for, they're like, well, then if I want to get laid, I have to be an asshole. Actually, that's not true. They don't really, they don't really like the asshole. They just like the fact that he's a challenge and he doesn't supplicate and he's not a bitch. They're not marrying the they, asshole. They don't like yeah, the yeah. asshole. They just can't figure him out. So they think they can f him and figure it out. And that doesn't work either. And then they end up bitching about him at brunch with their brunch bitches. And then he's on child support. Yeah, right. <laughs> so like, dude, we have to understand you have to be, women are attracted to men. They are not attracted to men that smell and look and behave like women. They are attracted to men. That is a masculine thing. Men are attracted to women. They are attracted to the feminine, the soft, the, the nurturing, the, uh, the, the opposite of what the they're supposed to be they're the, op the opposite okay and so you get these men who want to be the the partner to go to taylor swift and then <laughs> yeah and then they can't understand why these women won't want to have sex with them yeah okay why like work out yeah. bro dude here look this is the best philosophy for men and women understand men and women culture is totally fucked up Feminism has convinced women that they don't need a man. And now we have an epidemic of a bunch of women who, who no man was ever good enough. So they end up alone. Okay. Then on the other hand, on the other flip side of that, we have this red pill culture where young men are being taught that women are just pieces of shit and don't ever marry them. Don't ever do this. Don't ever do that. Don't ever let them close and get a vasectomy when you're 25 and just use them for what they're good for. And so we have these two polar opposite mentalities that are actually preventing men and women from coming together and realizing what role each plays in creating a life, yeah. okay? And by the way, this, nobody does this perfect. Men f it up, women f it up. But we have to examine the overall mentality of what society says we should have and what we want and what we actually want. And what this woman actually wants is a badass motherfucker with his own shit going on that she can be motivated from observing him, okay? And a challenge to get his time. That will make her attracted to him. But what she says she wants is, you know, a guy who could be her hype man. You're not going to, listen, those are conflicting ideas. Your dude that you want, that you're going to be attracted to, that you're looking for is going to have his own shit going on and you're going to have your own shit going on. And if you were a woman who didn't have her own shit going on, then your role would be to support him in other ways and vice versa. But like, it doesn't really work vice versa because women are never attracted to men that don't provide. It's not reality. It's a fake thing. And it's a feminism narrative that's not true. It's not true. That doesn't exist. The dad bod's bullshit. No women are attracted to a dad bod. No, not for real. If they are, it's because they're insecure and they don't want their dude going around and, you know, traveling the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so there's a lot of things here. But, like, real talk here, you don't need somebody to motivate you. You need somebody with their own shit going on who you're going to be attracted to because they have goals and they have ambitions and they are a badass just like you are. So stop fishing in the wrong pond. Start fishing the right one. It's real shit, man. <clears throat> well, guys, Andy. Question number three. Question number three comes from at Caleb Oyum3098. Hey, Andy, I'm 24 years old, and I've been listening to you since 2018. I am currently working with my family at our FEC uh, that we bought a little over a year ago. Um, my dad's been working in the industry his whole life, so I feel that I have a good grasp of the base of working of uh, FECs. We've managed to completely cha uh, change the reputation of the business 
And I know that I've been an integral part of that, especially with creating the culture of customer service driven staff with our younger employees. Started out as a normal employee working for my mom and sister, but was quickly promoted to assistant GM after the previous one decided to move on. Even though I'm working hard, I can't shake the feeling of everything being handed to me because I'm family. Any advice on how to navigate this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's, first of all, you're 24. Second of all, you probably did have a little bit of preference because of your family, and that's okay. That's why your family did all that work, by the way. They did all that work so you'd have this opportunity. But the way you get around this, because I have lots of friends who are second-generation business owners who come to me with the same concern. They're like, man, you know, I always feel weird because I didn't really build this. And I said, okay, so what do you think your job is? What do you think your role is? Your role in this situation is to take this business that has already existed. And yes, people are always going to say, because they're f-ing losers, that you got shit handed to you. Who cares? Who cares what the f- they say? All right. In fact, you were with me when I met one of the most famous people on the f-ing planet. Mm hmm. And this was the first thing he said to me. He said, man, you know, no one takes me serious because I grew up the son of a multi-billionaire. And by the way, this this man is one of the most famous men in the world. Y'all know who the f*** he is. Y'all knew who both of them are. Both of them are. And he says to me, he says, nobody ever, he's like, dude, I I really appreciate, you know, our friendship because uh, no one ever really takes me serious because I grew up the son of a billionaire. Bro, that's not your fault. How the f*** can you control that? Okay, so all these people that criticize these kids who grew up, they can't control that. That presents a whole different set of insecurities for people, you know, and and people who grew up in a regular family or a a less uh, fortunate family are always hypercritical of that because they believe that being born in that family will somehow create a situation where you have zero problems, which isn't true. You have a whole different set of problems, one of which is you never actually feel Like you're the responsible party for your own success. And that is very, very difficult to deal with for someone in this situation. So the best thing here for Caleb is to acknowledge, yes, this is true. But now I have the responsibility to take this company and make it exponentially more great than what my parents were able to do. Yeah. Okay. So your responsibility now as a 24 year old man is to become the best version of yourself to kick ass with this business, respect and value what your parents have built, and then take it and build it into something that they could have never done in the time that they were allowed to work on the business and make them proud of what you did with the business. Make it your own. Make this next phase of growth Caleb's phase to where it's a thousand X what they built. Okay. And then you will have, you probably still going to have the same people say you earned, you got it inherited. Those people. You'll know where you got it, and you'll know where you took it, and that's what ultimately matters. We, we cannot control where we start in life. We can control where we take it, though. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people are born on third base, and they stay on third base their whole life thinking that they got there on their own. That's reality. Some people are like that. You're not like that. You're, you're concerned that you're being judged, which you are, for being born into this situation, okay? Most of these people who are you know, inheritance wealthy, they don't give a f- about, it. they're just happy they have the wealth. And those people are some of the most miserable people on the earth because they have no purpose. You have a gigantic purpose here. Your purpose is to take what you were gifted and expand upon it in an exponential way so that you could say, this is, this was my legacy. And then, you know, maybe you have kids one day and you pass it down to their legacy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So you have to take ownership in a different way, man. And like, you, you got to let that go. People are going to judge you no matter what. You know, even if you're self-made, people are going to say stupid shit. They, they got different shit to say then. Yeah. You know, like, they're going to tell you, oh, man, your dad, golden spoon in your mouth, silver spoon in your mouth, born on third base, thinks he hit a triple. They're going to say all that shit. But what they don't say to you is things like what they say to me, which is, oh, you dedicate your whole life for money. All you give a f- about is this all you care i'm so much happier with these people are miserable people they are going to knock every single situation and every single set of circumstances to make them feel better about their their existence to knock on you it's nothing personal towards you these people are miserable with themselves in their own situation yeah so forget about it dude go take what you were given 
expand upon it, build it, make it a hundred times better, and you're gonna feel you won't feel like this. Yeah, that's and real. You, man. you certainly won't care. Yeah, yeah. You got handed an opportunity. What are you gonna do? Yeah, with it? go run with it, dude. Because you could easily f it up. Yeah, and they're gonna talk shit about you then. Too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Here's the kid who ruined the business. Exactly. Exactly. Which is statistically, now your family hates you too. <laughs> that's statistically the way it goes too. So you for, have a big family, like second gen. Yeah. yeah, second and third generation owners very rarely successful compared mm -hmm. to first. Okay, they didn't have to fight. They didn't have to scrounge. They weren't there when there was no business, and that's a different dog mentality. That you and by the way, Caleb, you need to learn this. You need to learn that mentality. Yeah, but um, yeah. you know, if you don't have that mentality, you end up like the second and third generation businesses would tip, typically fail. So, yeah, man. I would say not worry about it. I would say understand that you're getting the same criticism that a self-made person will get in a different way from the same people. Uh, these people are miserable. They're never going to accomplish anything. And in 20 years, you're going to remember their names, but the only reason you're going to remember their names is because you're thankful that they talked that shit because it drove you to be successful. I remember all my critics. Yeah. All the motherfuckers that told me that dumb shit, I think about them all the time. You know, like when I'm pulling up to my house or I'm pulling up here to HQ or I'm driving in one of my cars, or I'm like, man, I'm grateful for that dude. I'm grateful that person said that hurtful shit to me because here I am and there they are. That's how you're going to feel. It's real shit, man. Well, guys, this YouTube Q&A special, man, that was three. Yeah, go pay the fee.